I grew up in Fairfield, Connecticut, which is an hour and a half drive or train ride from New York City. While there are two high schools in my town that divide up the students, Fairfield Ward High School and Fairfield Ludlow High School, I focus on Fairfield Ludlow High School in this video because I know it better and I could interview some of the teachers. Uh, the town of Fairfield is a mostly white, upper middle class town which is reflected in its student population. However, it also has a rising population of immigrant families that are sending their children into the local schools such as Fairfield Ludlow. Fairfield is um, definitely majority, you know, white, uh, you know, district. So, um, but the population of ELL students and immigrant students has mm -hmm. been increasing quite a bit, and there has been a lot of discussion about like how do you serve these students. Um, so that's been something that the district's trying to handle and work with. Um, they had a meeting recently where they needed an Arabic translator. You know oh, wow. what I mean? Yeah. So there are things that um, the school system's having to adapt to something that it's not incredibly used to in order to be able to serve students, and not only Spanish speaking, you know, there's a lot of students that are coming from the Middle East, mm -hmm. especially, mm -hmm. that I've noticed lately, and East uh, Asian countries as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had students from Haiti, I've had students from uh, India, from Europe, from, uh, you know, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, um, definitely from, you know, Latin America. So, I mean, and I think for a lot of them, they have significant adjustments that they have to make to getting acclimated to, um, you know, living in a suburb of New York City. Um, in order to better serve the incoming students from other countries and help them adjust to learning in a foreign school and a foreign language, Fairford Ludlow has adopted programs to help them learn the different subjects while also learning more English. This is a small program in the school. The teacher who leads it is only in Ludlow in the mornings, and it utilizes classrooms when they are not being used by other teachers, such as this one here, which is tucked into the back of the library and I believe is used as a language room. Uh, we have what I believe is called ELL, English mm -hmm. Language Learner Program, that is designed to support kids that are um, not speaking English proficiently when they, when they arrive, uh, or they might be at various levels of, of English proficiency. And so based on, I think, how successful they are in the regular classroom, they, they scale the level of support that they get um, in that way. The interesting thing about Ludlow, um, it's only one of two high schools in town, as you know. So um, the ELL students are somewhat concentrated on the other side of uh, town and the ward side. Mm -hmm. um, so there is um, one ELL teacher at this school that's responsible for doing, um, she might push into a class. So she will, um, if you have an ELL student in your class, will come in and support them. She also teaches like a self-contained kind of resource class where she'll go through, um, you know, any kind of support. Mm -hmm. And then there's almost like a learning center class, which is what she usually teaches in here. And that class is more of like, um, almost like a structured study hall where she'll like help the students individually. Mm -hmm. um, the plan is next year, and I'm not privy to like all the information, is to create like a, um, uh, an ELL kind of academy at mm -hmm. Ward where um, students who are ELL um, will kind of go there and there will be like a social studies class that's just for ELL students. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the model um, that I think they're still developing that they might move to next year. According to Bari Rabin, one of the headmasters, most of the students that come to Ludlow from non-English speaking countries have been in the United States for over a year. Because of this, none of them are on the first scale of English proficiency, which is the highest need for help in English. The English Language Learners Program uses a Lost Links test to place kids within the program and also to place them out of the program and into fully English speaking classes. Lost Links does not seem to be a multinational corporation from my quick research on it. However, it is used across the United States to, te to test kids in both Spanish and in English. This is a picture of what English language learners would typically look like, and it is from the Fairfield County ELL homepage. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to find any pictures specifically from Ludlow, but the situation would be very similar to this. Another way the school is trying to integrate multiple linguistic students is through the STAR test that is given to all of its 10th graders, as the STAR test comes in both English and in Spanish. 
While there is the ELL program for kids in school, there may not be as many resources for the families uh, outside of school and in the community. Um, if you go next door to Bridgeport or where I went to school in New Britain, you would have, you know, where at my high school, all the signs were in English, Spanish, and Polish. So it was a way different situation where you're um, not only trying to help, you know, the students know their way around, but also mm -hmm. like parents. Um, I do know at open house night, you know, the parents do come in and get to meet the ELL teacher because it is an academic class, like it's in their schedule. Um, so I'm not sure uh, if they're, you know, what the adult ed program looks like. I don't know necessarily what Fairfield offers, you know, for like parents in the community. While the programs in the school definitely help kids enter the school system and get an education, there is a need for expansion as lessons taught in school need to be reinforced in the home for them to be fully learned and understood. Aside from the English Language Learners Program, which is limited to just those students who are learning English as a second language, Fairfield Ludlow has school-wide initiatives such as International Day, which aim at giving all of the students more of a global perspective. This year's International Day is actually today, Thursday, and is focusing on people's global identity. Students and teachers who have either lived abroad or have spent significant time outside of America are asked to give short presentations of their time there and explain about the different people and cultures that they encountered. Headmaster Barry Robin ended her presentation last year, which was focused on global footprints, by having the students place a star on the map pictured here in places that held some importance to them, either due to relatives living there or that area somehow affecting their lives in a significant way. This was an attempt to help broaden the kids' minds to think about how they are connected to the rest of the world. This was in addition to the curriculum for many courses, which also puts emphasis on a global perspective. The great thing is, like, I teach U.S. history and world history. So the world history, especially um, with my, you know, freshmen, um, everything's connected to modern day. So we're able to explain, especially in the second half of the year, which um, goes into, like, exploration and, you know, all of that and, like, enlightenment. So they're able to see, you know, how these foundations are and, like, you know, why countries have certain cultures or languages or why there's immigration. Um, so that's been really helpful. U.S. history, um, definitely I think like the students get a sense of, you know, how the world is interconnected, especially because the United States has played such a role on the international stage. So I think it does lay that foundation as well. To be fostering an awareness of how to participate in the global economy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not a major focus of our English curriculum as a whole. Eurocentric and Anglocentric um, approaches to texts. Um, that being said, you know, certainly sometimes in, uh, say, AP literature class, for instance, we do teach students uh, some things about critical theory, including, you know, how to look at literature through a post colonial lens, for instance. The main idea of these courses may not be to train kids for immediately joining the workforce or for being competitive in the global economy, although prepping for the workforce was emphasized in some of the classes that I took. The emphasis on global thinking and seeing international relationships that is taught, however, will help kids if they're entering businesses where they're dealing with company branches or suppliers in foreign countries, and in that way it is helping with their perceived competitiveness in the future. The main goal of many classes at Ludlow is training kids to go to college and how to do the work that colleges will expect. This is a picture of a student poster displaying statistical research that they did in class. While this is easily applicable to the workforce, it is also practice for research in college and displaying that research. This focus on college is seen in the testing carried out at Fairfield Ludlow. As one of the main goals of the schools to prepare kids for higher education, many tests are centered around that goal and come from companies in the United States. But most of the standardized tests that are that we pay attention to or that we're asked to pay attention to, I mean in our AP programs, the kids are asked to prepare for the advanced placement test, all of which are created by College Board, mm -hmm. which are the same people that produce, you know, the ACT and SAT and um, actually the also the GRE exams and a bunch of other ones. Mm -hmm. But those are all domestically produced. I don't think there's a lot of um, globalized sourcing going on with in terms of where those tests come from. And For the uh, AP level, a lot of them are coming from College Board. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, and they're kind of adapted from those those companies because they are written a certain way. Yeah. Um, but I've also used like review companies, so like Kaplan, Princeton Review, um, Barron's, as sort of like model test questions. Um, for my freshmen, not as much. We mm-hmm. might model because it's not an AP level, so it's not. I don't have to model test questions yeah. particularly. But we actually will use like the Regents out of New York, um, as kind of like model questions sometimes. So, and that's more of like you know a state testing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if they model theirs over like certain private companies. While the tests given to students, especially at the higher levels, are centered around the United States university system, some of the companies that teachers get practice questions from are international corporations. Kaplan is a good example of this as it is a test prep company that deals with many United States tests such as the ACT, SAT, LSAT, and bar exam, but it has services in the United Kingdom, Mexico, India, and other countries. The same goes for the Princeton Review, which has international offices in Jordan, Vietnam, Oman, Kuwait, China, and Turkey, to name a few, along with authorized dealers in Morocco, the Philippines, Indonesia, Panama, and Spain. Even College Board, which is based in the United States, offers tests such as the SAT on a global scale, although mostly in Asia, presumably for students wishing to study in the United States. The education system in Fairford Ludlow is currently expanding to accommodate a student body drawn from a more globalized base. While it is still predominantly white and upper middle class, it has implemented programs such as English language learners to help kids who come from non-English speaking backgrounds. This program is somewhat small, however, and focuses more so on the students while in school. In addition, Ludlow emphasizes a global perspective in many of its social studies courses and tries to prepare kids for the global economy and expectations of future employers, as well as for college and in some classes, everyday life. The tests given are largely centered in the United States, but the companies that provide them are mostly international testing companies, and often teachers use test prep corporations for practice questions which connect the school to international testing and other countries that use the same companies.